Matt from ECU Master here. I get this question a few times a week. People ask me, hey, how do I set up a base map or do you have a base map for, you know, this turbo, this engine, uh, vanilla aroma air freshener, you know, they give me a laundry list of modifications and, and want to know how to configure a base map or, or want us to hand them one. So we have general base maps for basic setups. We don't, you know, we don't usually make one for each customer. We just can't do that. We can't keep up. So today I'm going to show you how to do basic changes to a base map for yourself. So what I've started with here, I started with our 1JZ base map. Um, the 1JZ is kind of interesting in that the uh, injectors are paired on three channels instead of six. So let's say that this guy wired up his car to run all six injectors individually, so you know, to run them full sequential. Let's say he's got a set of ID1000 injectors uh, and he's got the base pressure cranked up a little bit. Let's say we've got you know 55 PSI base pressure on his fuel pressure regulator. Uh, and then we'll say he's got uh, like the LQ9 truck coils and staged fuel pumps. Um, so we're gonna start with the general base map. I'm gonna show you how to make all the changes to, uh, to you know, get his car started and get it operating properly. So what I'm gonna start with first is uh, engine cranking fuel. I've done this in another video, so I've kind of shown you the general gist of it. Uh, as we see in the base map, the way it's configured, uh, we've got a prime pulse, which means that it fires a little fuel right when it sees movement on the crank, you know, when you engage the starter. I'm going to deselect batch all injectors. Batch means they fire every injector event. So six times for two crank revolutions. Uh, that's a lot on bigger injectors. So we're going from a 370 to a thousand cc injector. So I'm going to deselect that. Make sure we use the injector calibration, which is the, the latency for the injectors. They're the dead time. And then I'm going to leave the fuel where it is and, and we'll hope that's right. We can experiment with that later. Um, that should be plenty of fuel to get the car started. Uh, if it's too little or too much, you can kind of hear it bog if it's too much when it starts, or uh, if it takes too long to crank, doesn't start up, then start adding cranking fuel. Uh, make sure you've got a decent looking curve there. This one still could probably use some enrichment in the lower regions. For the injectors cowl, what we can do, uh, the nice thing is we've got a little wizard for fuel. So we can open the injectors wizard and choose from you know, a basic list of injectors. So we've got the data for ID1000s at, at 3 bar, which is you know, just over 40 PSI, I want to do the data for a base pressure higher than that. So the injector data will change anytime you make a change to base pressure because the more pressure there is across the injector, the differential pressure, uh, the longer it takes to open. So I'm just going to close out of this and go over to my web browser and I'm at injectordynamics.com. We've got the data here. Let's say we got 55 PSI differential. So the base pressure is 55 pounds. And these are our latency values. So we can see it's, you know, in milliseconds. This is microseconds that they're showing. So in milliseconds, this would be 3.015. So go back to the software. That was at 8 volts, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, 8 volts. That's 3.015. Double click this guy. And do that for each of the points we have data for and then you can interpolate and make the curve look nice. I'm going to do it for 10 and show you kind of how that works. So 55 pounds, 10 volts, we got 1.815 and just go down the whole list and make a nice looking curve. You know, we don't have data for these extreme low voltages here, but we can always just crank that up some by entering in a higher value here and making it look like a nice gradual curve. Uh, so I'm going to stop there. You can do the rest of that on your own. Um, since we are going to do sequential fueling instead of, you know, firing the injectors in pairs, I'm going to show you how to set that up. So we've got, you know, you see we've only got three injector events here. We're going to have six once we have them wired up to each channel. So I'm going to start here and just mirror the ignition outputs. So here we've got, you can see the normal firing for a six cylinder is offset by one. That's just the way the, tr the triggers were configured on this motor. It's using, you know, the middle cam sensor instead of the back one. So it's offset by a little bit. So we've got one, five, three, six, two, four. We just have five as the first one here, but it's all the same order, just offset. So we'll start with five, three, six, two, See, I pulled up a, a warning box here. It's letting me know that with the outputs configured the way I do on this, we've got the, the fuel pump triggered by the, the injector for 
output. So I'm going to need to change that. So if you had a plug and play adapter or it's assigned this way, you'd need to remove the pin and move that to another output, one of the auxiliary outputs. So I'll, uh, I'll sort that out right now. I'm going to move that over to, we'll say, auxiliary 2. So that way I shouldn't get a warning when I do this. And I'll probably get a warning for one more of these. So it's 5, 3, 6, 2, 4. And again, another one. So we need to move the main relay output to another channel. And 1. So again, go over to my outputs, main relay. It's giving me that red showing that I've got a conflict. You can also see that here when you go to show assigned outputs, that I've got conflicts on injector five. It shows me the two channels it's assigned to. I'll move that over to auxiliary one and you just have to make sure to repin that. Oh, that's already used by check engine light. So uh, let's see what else I've got. I can use you know, auxiliary five or six. Those are both available, so we'll say this is auxiliary five now. So hit make changes permanent, leave that as it is. So that sorts out our fuel injectors. Um, next, yeah, let's say that he's actually put in a 2JZ bottom end, so it's not a two and a half liter anymore. Let's say that he's got a 2JZ block. That's as easy as taking the displacement and changing it like so. So that's the change there. And then also if we do we enter in our own latency data for the injectors, we need to enter the flow rate here. So that would be, again, at 55 base pressure, the flow rate would be 1135 cc per minute. So we just enter in and set that up as such. What else did I say? Oh yeah, let's say he's got truck coils. Those need a little bit more dwell time than the stock Toyota ones. Or let's say he just deleted the igniter and wanted to trigger the coils directly from the EMU, which you can do. The EMU has a built-in igniter, so you can run the coils using the stock igniter, or you can drive them directly. I can drive up to six coils directly. So if I wired them up directly, then just say no amplifier, your dwell times stay the same, no problem there. Um, if we are using a smart coil, you'd say coils with built-in amplifier. Let's say that the truck coil is called for you know, three volts at, or three milliseconds of dwell at 14 volts. We can just take this curve, multiply it by 1.2. So that's 1.2, hit the asterisk, and just increase that. You know, find the correct data for your coils. Don't just guess at this. I'm just doing a general overview to show you how to do this, but there is dwell information available for virtually any coil out there. You just have to do a little digging based on what you're using. Uh, the other thing I suggest is that let's say he's got two fuel pumps and he wants to stage the second one. Um, so let me just find an empty table here. Let's say that he's got two fuel pumps. So I'll we'll set up the first one. Again, we moved it to auxiliary two. Let's say we don't need to run it for three seconds when the key comes on. Let's say he only wants to run it for you know, a second and a half just to prime the fuel system. And then we've got second parameter output we can use, let's say we use auxiliary six, and use this to trigger the second fuel pump. And let's say that we want the RPM to be higher than 4,000 RPM. Hysteresis means that if this drops down below, you know, it'll trigger once it's above 4,000, it won't turn back off until it drops below, you know, it'd be 3,500 for the lower end if we have a 500 RPM hysteresis value. If we drop it to 400, that means it's going to stay triggered until you get to 3,600 RPM. Uh, so just something to be aware of. We'll leave it at 500 just for giggles. We can also say and. So let's say we only want to run the second fuel pump when you're above 4,000 RPM and your manifold pressure is greater than, you know, we'll say, you know, 10 pounds of boost or, you know, something that's a rough estimate. Uh, trying to convert that to... KPA in my head, uh, so it'd be you know, around 170 KPA, if I'm doing my math right. And then hysteresis, again, we can pick, you know, let's pick 30 there for that. Um, 
and that's it. We'll, we'll choose those two things. So we've got to set up, um, you know, we set up the first two variables, which is RPM and map. So we've got, you know, it's only active above 4,000 RPM. And it's only active above 170 pound or 170 kPa. Uh, and let's bring this down, the hysteresis value. We'll get that a bigger hysteresis because, you know, when you shift, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want the fuel pump to turn off between gears. You want it to stay on uh, just because it's not as quick to respond probably. You just don't need that thing switching on and off all the time. So we'll say, uh, you know, give it a, just a gigantic hysteresis value. That way uh, it's not a problem. It's not going to switch off between gears when boost goes away. Uh, so that's that. So we've set up our coils, our fuel pump outputs, our injector data, and our uh, displacement. And all of our startup settings, or at least the basic startup settings. That should be enough to get you started up. Um, require some, some tweaking from there. But again, ignore this ugly calibration here that's not completed. But uh, that's the general gist of it and should get you fired up. Thanks for listening in.